Uh, okay, good morning everyone. Um, today uh, we're going to have the last class. <laughs> we will finish the semester today. <laughs> All right, so now we, we're going to prove, uh, at least I'm going to give you a sketch of proof of this refined ASM conjecture. So what is that? So it's a n comma k. This is the number of alternating sign, uh, n by n alternating sign matrices with one in the first row and uh, kth column. And this is equal to uh, some nice product like this. So when uh, k equals n, we get just the number of alternating sign matrices of one smaller size. So this implies the alternating sign matrix uh, theorem. So you proved the alternating sign matrix conjecture in the last homework as a series of exercises. And the way we did, it, did that is to use uh, this partition function for the square eyes or six vertex model. So this is the partition function. Partition function for six vertex model. Okay. And we proved this, this theorem that there is a uh, explicit formula for this partition function. So Z n x y a equals certain formula that we're going to denote by f. So what is that? Where fn equals this kind of product. By the way, I'm going to write many uh, things, but please don't, uh, don't be in intimidated by this. If you only focus on, so the computations are quite technical and lengthy, but if you focus on the idea, it will be uh, very interesting. So we proved this last time. and determinant of certain matrix given by this. N by N matrix, okay? And if, so we have a formula for this partition function, and we know that if x1 equals, if xi's are all equal to double, uh, W, the cube, cube root of unity, y is all 1, a equals, again, cube root of unity, then we, we, uh, we saw that this is the, so W to the n times number of alternative sign matrices. So you can uh, c kind of compute this. Compute the number of alternative sign matrix, matrices using this formula. Sim similarly, uh, if you just change x1 slightly, like this, uh, for i greater than 2. So they are all the same as before, except the x1, where we have additional vector t, another v v parameter. And y's are all 1. a is the cube root of unity, like this. Then what we get is, we also saw this, this partition function specialized at these values. This is a sum with A and R, uh, alternate sign matrices with ones in the specific point, uh, position. And some polynomial in T, uh, Lorang polynomial in T, and we know, we, we can check that these are linearly independent. 
Okay. And we ha we have a formula, so we know this is equal to something, right? So how can we prove uh, this conjecture? Because these polynomials are linearly independent. If suppose that so we, because this is a polynomial in T, if you plug in here, we will get some kind of polynomial. But let's just say f n something uh, specialized spe uh, with these uh, parameters are specialized. Let's say t is a polynomial in t should be a polynomial in t. So if you can. If you want to show this uh, uh, conjecture, all you need to do is to plug this inside here, then you get a s summation formula. And if you can show that this is really the case, if this is true, then these coefficients are uniquely determined by this equation, so they must be the same. That is how we prove this. But there is one slight problem. You, you already noticed this when you proved the alternating sign matrix conjecture. The problem is, this uh, substitution is not uh, available for this. It's not valid because we get uh, zeros in the denominator. So we have to do something, uh, some, something more. Uh, substitution, uh, this uh, substitution uh, is not, uh, say, valid for the determinant over here because we have zeros in the denominators. So how can we uh, fix this? So we generalize this formula. Uh, we consider Q version so that we can, pl uh, we can uh, plug in this substitution with uh, additional parameter Q. And after computing a little bit, and then, and then finally we can set Q equals 1 so that we get uh, just the number. So that's the idea. So, so we first to fix to avoid this problem, we consider uh, Q analog, and then finally uh, let Q approaches <coughs> one, so that we can really get non-zero uh, denominator. That's the basic outline. So. How can we substitute instead, instead of this? So we say uh, we let x1 equals wt, xi equals wq to the i minus 1 over 2 for i between 2 and n, and yj equals q to the 1 minus j over 2 for all j and a as before. Then the theorem, the previous theorem, the theorem for the partition function, then uh, that becomes this kind of long formula. But, uh, as I said, uh, just look at just the basic structure of this theorem, this formula, instead of looking at all the details. It looks a little, uh, it looks quite complicated, but it's, a, it's not an impossible formula equals over times oops, uh, 
and then uh, determinant of some matrix. So here, this is a polynomial in uh, Q, and okay, here it's a polynomial. But if we take the limit uh, as Q approaches one, then we get this. I'm not, I'm not going to write an explicit formula for this, but all you need to know is this. And what is n? This matrix n and t. This is uh, matrix like this. So, so the first row is this. I'm going to use this kind of notation. So this is row over the, the kth entry in the first row looks like this. So k 1n. The first row is like that. k, uh, the first, first entry has uh, 1 minus t squared q over 1 minus t to the 6th q. Things like that. And the other entries are like this. C1, C2, Cn minus, Cn, Cn minus 2, Cn minus 1, C 2n minus 3, where Ck equals this constant. Okay? Alright, so what you need to focus over here is that, so just, you know, we can ignore this. Just num you can say that this is some kind of uh, some factor, and we have some kind another factor, and this is what's important. So we have some o some over some over uh, r from one to n, and we have this quantity. On on the other side, some factor we have some a uh, lot of factor like this, and times some determinant. But here, uh, if if you can compute this determinant. Uh, and then we, can, we, we, our goal is to compute this determinant first, and then try to simplify so that we can take the limit q equals one. If you do that, then we have uh, a n over here, a n comma r, and some uh, linearly independent polynomial equals uh, some formula. So if you can plug in the conjectured formula for this, and then show that the sum. This equation holds, and the, the theorem will be, uh, the conjecture will be proved. Okay? So, first thing is to compute this determinant. Okay? Yeah, I could have just, uh, I could have just written like, Instead of writing all the details like this, I could have, I was thinking actually, like something summation times something a n r q equals something times determinant. This is the, because this is what, what's really important, right? So we have some factor that we not going, we're not going to pay too much attention right now. But the structure is like that. Compute, so simplify this or compute this determinant, simplify this, then and q equals one limit, then we get something times a n r something equals some formula. And just plug in the conjectural formula over here, to, because these are linearly independent polynomials. That's the proof. Okay? That's the outline. Does it make sense? All right, so the first thing we need to do is to evaluate this determinant. How? But fortunately, this uh, has a nice structure like this. And this is closely related to uh, another important object in mathematics called uh, orthogonal polynomials. So we need to... Uh, look at those objects, orthogonal polynomials. Let me review, uh, briefly um, tell you what these are. Orthogonal polynomials. These are well-studied objects 
quite classical. Like. So there are many things uh, known in this subject. So say T, so R is a uh, ring. So we have a ring of polynomial. <coughs> we can think of R just a C, a uh, complex number. <coughs> so we have a linear operator. R is a ring. <coughs> so what, what does this mean? So it sends a polynomial uh, to just a number. Okay? But it is linear. That means it satisfies the linear re relation like fx plus gx equals t, as you guess. And if you have constants here like A, B, then that comes out like that. So linear operator means things like that. But because this is the space of polynomial, all you need to know about this linear operator is this. T, K, uh, T of X, K. Right? If you know this value for every K, then you know how to evaluate T of F, X for any polynomial F because any polynomial can be written as a linear combination of this, okay? And so this is very important, and it's called the uh, moment. So we're going to denote this by CK. This is called kth moment um, of T, this operator T. <coughs> and this matrix, or determinant uh, matrix, C0, C1, C2, Cn minus 1, C1, C2, Cn, Cn minus 1, up to C2 uh, and minus 2. This kind of matrix is called uh, the Henkel matrix. The Henkel matrix. <coughs> so, in the previous paper, page, we saw a mat the matrix N, which has a uh, part looks like this. Not exactly this, but except the first row, it looks exactly like this. <coughs> and there is a nice theorem, very well known theorem in orthogonal polynomials. If the determinant of this matrix, Henkel determinant, if the determinant of the Henkel matrix is non-zero for all n, so for all n, the size n by n, <coughs> then there is a unique family of polynomials orthogonal to this uh, linear operator. Unique, unique family of monic, monic means the leading coefficient is 1. Monic orthogonal polynomial orthogonal with respect to this operator T. <coughs> what does that mean? Op uh, orthogonal means that is that is that is to say, uh, T of P M. So let's say this orthogonal polynomial P M of X. M like that. <coughs> P M X. So degree of P M is M. So we have, a, we have a sequence of polynomials like P0, P1, P2, etc. And the ith polynomial has degree m. And the leading coefficient is 1, which means it's monic. And orthogonal means if you, pro if you take the product of two polynomials for different n and m, and take this operator, then it will be 0 if m different from n. <coughs> OK? So this, this is a theorem. There's, it's unique. Moreover, we can write down the explicit formula for this. Moreover, Pn is, can be written 
exactly like this using determinant. Determinant 1 x x squared dot 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 x to the n <coughs> c0 c1 cn cn minus 1 c2 n minus 1 over determinant this Henkel matrix. So here, uh, the important assum this Im assumption is important, and it makes sense in this formula because, you know, if this is zero, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> but as long as this is non-zero, then you, you can always define a polynomial like this. And actually, it's quite easy to see that, <coughs> uh, not in this form, but it's pos you can prove that this really satisfies this condition. Yeah, that's, I think, one of the homework problems. Okay. <coughs> Any question? <coughs> Is this matrix uh, familiar with you? Have you seen a matrix that looks something like this? Yes, we saw it. Right here. The first row, let's, let's ignore the first row for the moment. Except the first row, this matrix N and this matrix, they look exactly the same. Only the first row is are different. Right? But you can kind of see that there must be some connection. All right, so how can we relate them? Because here uh, we have this def uh, definition for CN. Let's say CN equals that thing. So let CK equals 1 minus Q to the, we define this, 3K plus 3, then, you know, by definition, this is just the definition. This is the matrix that we want to compute the determinant. So the first row, I'm just rewriting. I'm writing the same thing. The first row is like that. So what is C? CK. CK is just this number. So we, we're going to define uh, operator T. So we define uh, the operator, linear operator T by, you know, a linear operator is defined if you can, if you define the moment, it's moment, right? By like T XK, the kth moment is just CK. This number, just, we just define it, right? <coughs> right now, we don't really know that. So we, 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 can, we have a nice Henkel determinant. If the Henkel determinant is non-zero, always, then there is a family of orthogonal polynomials with, with respect to this measure, as the theorem says. It turns out that the determinant is non zero. So we will ha we have uh, let Pn x this be the corresponding the unique monic uh, monic orthogonal polynomial. Right? But we know exact formula for this. What is that? this, right? So Pn is this. <coughs> now what? Now what, what, what can you do? 
But we, this looks quite similar to this, but not the same. But we can kind of change this into this. How? By defining another operator. So let S be another operator, operator defined by so again, all we need is this kth moment. And we're going to define this to be 1 minus t squared qk, 1 minus t to the sixth q3k. Just define it like that. What happens in the first row? The first row is this part is exactly, if you look at this part, this is exactly s of xk. Uh, k minus 1. Oh, I see. Oh, I see, I see. Yeah, that's right. K, yeah, this is K, but K goes from 0 to N minus 1. Yeah, that's right. Okay? So, in other words, then N is going to be, what is N? S of 1, S of x, dot, 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 S of x to the n minus 1, right? And C0, like that. What is this? What is the determinant of this, then? Then what happens is, this is exactly uh, this. S of, so P, what is P? P is like this. So, 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 so we, we need to consider P of P sub n minus 1 because we want n by n matrix. So imagine um, P n minus 1. So we have n minus 1 thing. All we need to do is to take the, op the linear operator over here, like that. What happens if you take the li linear operator? <coughs> because it's linear, except x, everything else is constant. So this is equal to just taking the because we have x is only in the first row, you can just uh, take the operator everywhere over here. Because you will select only one element in the first row, in the determinant, right? But this is exactly uh, n. That means s of p n minus 1 of x equals some something and determinant n and t and we have uh, an additional one, which is uh, this thing, Henkel determinant, right? Where uh, n star is the Henkel determinant. So we, we can write uh, like this, i, j, 1, to n minus 1, all right? So this is what we want to compute. Any uh, questions so far? Hmm? K plus three? Uh, that's right. K plus one, if I factor this three out, yeah. Thank you. Other question? Okay, so if you want to compute this, we need to compute this and this, right? So we are kind of changing the problem into something else that we can do better. All right, so, uh, okay, let's go back to this equation, this complicated looking equation. I'm going to call this uh, star, the whole equation over here. Okay, let's just erase this. Let me uh, write, let me name 
the whole equation here, because it's too long, just a star, okay? We're going to plug in something over here so that we get n star. That's just computation, so I'm, go I'm not going to do uh, the de details, say more, more details, but let me just say, just tell you the result. If, if we plug in t equals uh, w, q, n minus 1, if you do this kind of nice substitution, then what, we, what happens is Okay, I'm not going to write the whole, everything, not going to do everything. A, N, N. We have, so on, the, on, the, on one side, on the left hand side, we have some summation, but that substitution makes everything zero except R equals N case. So we get only one term on the left hand side. So something, some factor times this equals some factor times determinant of N star. Right? After you Let's say this is two. Um, yeah, we, we didn't e even have one, but yeah, <laughs> two. <laughs> Maybe I, I didn't write one. But anyway, so we have star and two. Divide star by two, the so both sides. We're going to divide. Uh, yeah. mm -hmm. oh, by, by the way, uh, note. Here, if limit Q approaches 1, A, N, N, the Q equals A, N, N. And here, the right-hand side, he, okay. Let me write down, write down the, right, the left-hand side because it's quite simple. The right-hand side looks like this. This is more complicated. So here, you, you can take the limit Q, Q approaches 1. You know, this is just 1, this is a n n, this is w n minus 1, right? So limit q approaches 1, left-hand side, non-zero, right? That means determinant of this must be non-zero, so it's non-zero. So the Henkel determinant is non-zero, so this, this is really, this really makes sense, right? We don't need to worry about this being zero. That's some, one thing that you can obtain from uh, this equation too. Now we uh, divide a star equation by uh, two, so side by side. Left hand side divided by left hand side, right hand side divided by the right hand side. And then we get another equation. Uh, Okay. Okay, this looks uh, simpler than star, so I'm going to write this down. equals product product over these are all written in the lecture notes so yeah you don't have to write these down <laughs> yourself but if you want to Feel free to copy this. Minus 1, n minus 1. Here is s of p n minus 1 x. Because we know that this is equal to determinant of n over determinant n star, right? So we get this. So let, we're going to call this a uh, double star, this equation. And uh, so the refined uh, uh, ASM conjecture is a formula, certain formula for this, right? But 
uh, that is equivalent to this, the refined ASM conjecture is equivalent to an equation for this, the same, if you can show this, you can prove the ASM and vice versa, refined ASM I mean. If you divide this by this, it looks, uh, sim it gets simpler. And it is enough to show this, they are equivalent. So, you need to, sh it is sufficient to prove this, but how can you show this? Again, substitute, so simplify this, compute this, uh, th this thing and then simplify this so that we can take the Q equals one limit and we have Q equals one limit, just substitute this inside over here and show that the resulting equation is true. Then this theorem, this uh, formula is proved and thus ASM, refined ASM will be proved. That's our goal, our strategy. Question? A-N-R, hmm? A-N-N. Yes, it is A-N-R. A N N. Yeah, it is this part over here. So when Q equals Q approaches one, this will be uh, this. So what's the next step then? What do we need to do? We need to evaluate this part. This is what we need to do. We just change it, the determinant, into this. How can we do that? Uh, so our next step compute, of course, this. But how? This is interesting because, um, yeah, because we just we define S. If you remember, we defined S operator S and T by giving their moment. We just define T by this equation T of x to the k, the kth moment equals something. But now, we're going to find this um, operator S and T by explicitly giving the form, uh, exact formula by finding explicit formula, formulas for S, T, and P. So we will compute, the, we will find this and this and this explicitly. Okay? And to do that, we need to introduce more notation or uh, terminology. Any question, by the way, before I go next page? All right, uh, then we need to do this Q calculus. So it's based, it's a calculus with additional parameter Q. So what is that? So we're gonna define uh, differentiation and integration involving P, uh, Q. The, uh, but uh, I think it could be uh, easier than the usual calculus, I think, you know. The Q derivative operator, D sub Q, is defined by, so what is uh, uh, the derivative operator usually? So you have uh, a function f, f of x, if you apply D, the derivative operator, you will get the derivative of F, like F prime of X, right? It's something like that. The DQ, if you apply this operator to a function, F of X, then this is the this is definition, F of X minus F of XQ over X minus XQ. So notice that this is, uh, if Q approaches one, you get the usual derivative operator. Limit 
Q approaches 1. This is what? The usual operator, D. Uh, in other words, more, more precisely, D, Q, F of X, what is that? Limit Q approaches 1. I'm just substituting this. This is exactly what we do for the usual uh, derivative, right? So x and xq, if q approaches 1, they will be very close to each other. We divide this uh, and by this. Okay? Rate of change of x divided by the rate of change for x. That's the derivative that we learned. So in some sense, I think this is easier than this because you don't need to worry about the limit. You just definition like that. How easy that is. And in fact, Ferma used this uh, used dq to show that the derivative of xn is equal to n times x n minus one for n rational. Oh yeah, I'm going to briefly show you how he did it. dqxn, what is this? By definition, xn minus xn q to the n over x minus xq, right? And this, xn, 1 minus q to the n, x, 1 minus q, and this, x to the n, 1 minus q to the n, oh, n minus 1, 1 minus q. So what happens if Q approaches 1? As Q approaches 1, what happens? You know, here, uh, you know, it will be 1, uh, N. Right? <laughs> How? You, you use L'Hopital's row, and then you, you show that. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah, you know, L'Hopital's rule, uh, take the derivative of Q. Here, 1, we get N. A minus 1, minus n. Right? Is that okay? Really? <laughs> because, you know, what did I use when I, using, when I was using L'Hopital's rule? I used the derivative of q to the n is n times q to the n minus 1. Right? I used that to prove this. So, <laughs> that, that's not really a uh, proof. We need to do something else, right? You cannot use L'Hopital's rule. But you can prove that this, is, this approach is 1, uh, n. When, uh, so, you know. Not, not difficult, this. Of course, without using uh, L'Hopital's rule. You cannot use, you're, you're not allowed to use L'Hopital's rule. But anyway, so sometimes Q derivative is easier than derivative. All right, so this is Q derivative operator. We also have uh, integration. Q integral. But before introducing the Q integral, let me review uh, the Q. Okay. We first, we will just consider integral from. Uh, 0 to a. What is this? The usual integral. What is that? You know, you just consider the graph y equals f of x, right? And then a is here. And then uh, this will be the area uh, of this, this part, of this region. How do you compute this? We divide this interval into small pieces, sub-intervals, like 
here x0, x1, x2, etc., like that, xn, it's like that. And then you cut this region into, so basically we approximate this uh, area using the rectangle obtained uh, like that, right? So if, but if you take the limit and approach this infinity, some uh, i from 0 to n, say, f of xi delta x, which is xi minus xi minus 1, like that. This is how we compute. Q integral is uh, something like this. Q in definition of a Q integral. The Q integral is defined like this. Integral from a, uh, 0 to a, f of x. Here we write d sub qx. This is summation i goes from 1 to infinity. Can you see the meaning of this? All you need to do is to define xi to be uh, a q to the i. Just imagine Q, real number, between 0 and 1, but close to 1, very close to 1. Then x0 is Q, uh, A times Q, that's over here. x1 is A times Q. Because Q is smaller than 1, it will be, AQ will be smaller than A. It will be somewhere here, but very close. AQ squared will be slightly smaller than this, like this. And again, slightly smaller than this. So if Q approaches 1, you get so we infinite sum over here. So we have infinitely many points like that. If Q approaches 1, every interval, sub-interval, has length approaching 0, so we get the usual integral. So if, OK. This is, uh, so we define integral, Q integral from over the inter interval for 0, A. This inter if you consider the inter arbitrary inter interval from A to B, this is just defined to be the difference between the Q integral from 0 to B and Q integral from 0 to A. This is definition. Then, like I said, if you take the limit Q of equals 1, A, B, F of X, D, Q, X equals the usual integral. So it's a kind of a generalization of the usual integral. So it's a series. It's an uh, infinite series in Q. You can think of this as a power series in Q. Any question? Okay, um, so we just defined Q derivative, Q integration, and we will, there, there are some analogous theorems for them. When theorems that are analogous to uh, the usual derivative and integration. So the facts. The, it's like a fundamental theorem of calculus. You will prove this uh, as homework problems. And we, so the, these are like fundamental theorem of calculus. And product rule, we also have Q analog of the product rule. slightly different than the user one, f of x. And um, integration by parts.
we have integration by part like this and if you integrate uh, this polynomial then uh, it is, it is uh, simple k plus 1 it's like a usual integral we only have this over here q integer if q equals 1 you get the usual thing right Education. Okay, now we're going to use this to find exact formulas for the operators T and S. But we will do that after 10 minute break.